Hi Cancer, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your November 20th to the 30th, 2021 reading for you, for money and career. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into the safe and loving space. Let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Cancer. November 20th to the 30th, 2021, Cancer, Money and Career. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and, oh goodness. And spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading and show me clearly. So at the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self, the middle, our heart, our emotional self, the right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the wheel of fortune and we have temperance, which is Sagittarius energy coming forward. If we have, if we have Sagittarius energy within our natal chart or within our lives, they're going to be, it's going to be coming through very powerfully at our root. And these people are going to affect us like at our root, at our core self. So just be aware of that. Then we have our inner self. We have judgment. We have the 10 of swords and we have the hermit, which is Virgo energy. If we have Virgo within our natal chart or within our lives, coming through very powerfully in our inner selves. We have our emotional self. We have the three of pentacles and the seven of wands. And then we have our public arena self, which is the king of swords. We are the warrior king. This is also air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. If we're born on the cusp with Gemini, or we have air sign energy within our chart, that's coming through very powerfully here in the public arena. And we have the three of swords. We're really battling against a lot of heartbreak, a lot of devastation, a lot of hurt that has been defining us. Now let's look at the energy here, the energy we need to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. It's justice. Now, this is going to be complex because we have to be mindful of kind of the wheels of justice, there might be something that's going on where people say, you know, well, this is how it's written, like this is how it's supposed to be, and it's not going to be just, it's just not going to be. So just be mindful of that. But there's also this energy here that's telling us to be discerning, discerning of the energy that we let into our lives, discerning of the way that we're moving forward, because there's going to be some sort of manipulation, some sort of, of I want to say trauma here that is coming up, and it's around something that was supposed to be just but wasn't so just be aware of that then we have our chakra energy angels and spirit guides show me clearly 
guide this reading. Divine wisdom. I love it. This is the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown. And this is the wisdom that guides us. This is going to be wisdom coming into our lives, divine presence coming forward that really helps us to embrace what we want from life, the way that we need to move forward in our existence. And just there's just like going to be a knowing around this time. So at our root, we have the wheel of fortune. Everything is changing. We have the repeat of the number 10. So we're coming to a end of a cycle, especially around things, the way that we mentally perceive things, the way that we're understanding things. So the Wheel of Fortune comes in and we just have this change. We just have this change of attitude, this change of seasons. We feel like we're on a roller coaster ride at times, so that can make things really quite intense. So we have to be aware of this. But what we're also going to see is that there's a need to step into a new sense of self and a new world. And we're going to need to balance all the change that is coming into our lives with everything that we're bringing forward, all the all the past everythings that are guiding us, that are holding us back, that are leading us to the place that we want to be. And we're also going to need to balance the energy within us, what we want, what we desire, what we're working towards. This is a money and career reading, and we can feel ourselves pulled in so many different directions during this time that we just need to step into ourselves. And we need to say, I need to balance. I need to look at what's important. I need to connect with myself. I need to connect with what is needed right now and really help myself to move to the next level of what I want in life, of what is, you know, what are my dreams? What are my goals? And what is it that I desire? Our angels are going to also really be around us because we're turning inward. And there's something going to be very beautiful about turning inward and seeing a lot of the walls that have been built, a lot of the traumas and the dramas that we have been through, a lot of the hurts that we have had to overcome. And there's a wisdom that comes with this. There's also a sense of following our deepest wishes, our deepest dreams, our deepest desires for this time, a sense of embracing our heart, embracing where we want to be, embracing where we need to be, embracing who we are, who we aren't. And there's just a lot of things that come forward as we connect with ourselves internally, as we really look deeply into what we want. We're also going to see that this is a time that if we kind of disconnect, if we curtail, you know, maybe the use of social media or other things that we do to distract ourselves and really step into ourselves and be open and be honest and and be beautiful, we let ourselves shine in just a way that kind of takes our breath away, in a way that we forgot we could shine because life got hard and complicated and things got overwhelming and everybody needs us and there are 18 million different directions that we're being pulled during this time. And it leads us to the Ten of Swords. It leads us to this place where we look at the hurts and the betrayals and the disappointments and the angers and the upsets that we have in our lives. And we're pulling out those swords. We're pulling out the, the hardship that we may have been acquiring over a decade of our lives. And we're saying, but this is where I stand. You know, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is what I need for myself. And this is where I need to be. The Ten of Swords is this intense understanding. It's the darkness before the dawn. It's this realization that comes in before all the light comes on. And it's that time where we're kind of blinking and adjusting. And then we're saying, oh, but this is it. And so here, as we arm ourselves with the knowledge we have from the pain that we've been through, we embrace our strength. We embrace what we need and desire. And we feel our angels calling to us in just a very real way, in a very beautiful way, where it's like, there's something more here than meets the eye. You know, we're coming out of this box. We could have put ourselves in this box. Like, this is what success looks like. We could have had others say to us, oh, you will be, you know, this or that, because this is what success looks like. And we're redefining it. We are redefining what success is and what we need and want from our lives. This isn't living for other people. This is connecting with us. And as we do this and as we embrace this and as we're, you know, embodied by this energy of our angels guiding us forward, we look at ourselves creating, creating warmth and comfort around us, listening to our dreams, but also always making sure that we guard our money. It's going to be very important for us to guard our money, to know where our pennies and dimes are going or whatever currency we use is going, where we are aware of the little things and, and connected with the bigger things. Because there's also going to be the sense of, I'm creating this, but I want everybody to have it, so I'm going to undersell myself, you know, or I want to be able to, to connect with so many that I undersell myself. There's going to be something here where it's like, oh, but anybody could do this, so I undersell myself. And what Spirit's saying here is, stop. Stop underselling yourself and connect with your money, connect with your prosperity, connect with the warmth and the beauty and the bounty that is embracing this world 
And it moves us to the seven of wands. It moves us to this place where we realize what we're fighting for. But we also realize that we can't be fighting all the time because that's exhausting. And as we are looking at the energy that drains us, especially in the workplace, especially in our careers or our jobs or, you know, however we look at work, there's going to be the sense of I'm fighting this battle. And why am I fighting this? You know, am I fighting this for me? Am I fighting this for other people? Am I fighting this, you know, so that I'm taken seriously? Why aren't I taken seriously? Or am I fighting against the the very essence of myself that's saying, I don't want to be here anymore. Like, I can't do this. I just don't want to. And yes, we need to uphold our responsibilities. I'm a firm believer in that, in, in making sure things are taken care of. But what we also need to realize here is that we can't always sacrifice ourselves and that we might need to, at this time, be juggling, you know, looking for a job and being in a job or starting our own, own business and, you know, being in a job. But what we have to do and what we have to be really aware of is that our energy will be drained if we're fighting and fighting and fighting, if there's anger, if there's discord, if there's, you know, chaos here. And we're going to have to step into the sense of, I can't fight all the time. I just can't. It's going to be really important for our hearts because our hearts are kind of tired of the endless fighting. And it moves us to the King of Swords. It moves us to this time where we as water sign energy, our hearts are connecting with our passion, our desire, with, you know, the bigger picture of what we want and what we need and what we're going for. And this is the warrior king. This is the king that's not taking anybody's bull. We are going after what we want. We're cutting through doubts and fears and negativity, and we're embracing so much more than we realize we could have. This is a time of epiphanies. This is a time of realizations. This is a time of that light bulb moment that's like, oh my, you know, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. With the King of Swords, we have to be very mindful, and our hearts are warning us of this, of taking this time and seeing it as one big fight, one big challenge, one big, you know, intensity to be, to be beaten down. So the King of Swords is saying to us, look at what you have been training for, because we don't know how to use a sword automatically. And in medieval times, only the nobility got to use swords. And this is true throughout cultures, you know, in, in Japan, only the best got to use the sword. In, in, in France, only the best got to use the sword. So here we have that sense of only the best gets to use the sword. And I get to be the best of who I am, of what I want to achieve, of where I'm headed, of what I'm going for. And that starts to open up us. We start to see ourselves as kings. We start to see ourselves as powerful, insightful, logical, you know, intense human beings that are using their minds to, to break down barriers and only the nobility who gets to hold the sword. So we are greatness. You know, we are what is considered to be the prize. And as we're embracing this, we are looking at the hurt and the pain and the disappointment that has defined us for too long. The I can'ts instead of the I can'ts. The, the sense of, I just can't, you know, move past this pain, this disappointment. I'm going to make the same mistake over and over again. And what spirit is saying here is stop, stop. Look at the pain that has been welling up inside. Look at when we start to step forward, how we're retreating because we have this fear, this fear of hurt, this fear of devastation again. The repeat of the number three is telling us that, you know, it's telling us that divinity is with us. Divinity is guiding us. And that there is something creatively beautiful here. We might need to step into meditation to look at the Three of Swords. We might need to look at what we truly fear. You know, where does this fear that comes to the surface right now, where does it stem from? Why is it there? You know, are we afraid of not being able to be responsible for things because we had a parent who wasn't responsible for things? Are we afraid of, you know, the rejection because we've been rejected before? What are we afraid of? And why are we afraid of it? And why does it get to consume our life and keep and wounding us, keep on opening up and making us, you know, weak with its endless festering. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the princess of wands. We need to be mindful of the people who don't really know and who are coming into our work, coming into our lives and saying, well, you should be doing this and you should be doing that. We need to step into our power. We need to listen to people. Yes, most definitely. But we don't need to change ourselves to be what other people expect. And also we need to know the day-to-day -day reality of things. 
It moves us to our subconscious chakra energy, which is clarity, the third eye chakra. We're going to be seeing things more clearly. We're going to be seeing ourselves more clearly, what we want, what we need, how we're developing, where it is that we're going. And we need to listen to those instincts that are coming forward. Our subconscious rooted energy is the fool. It is time to, to go on that adventure. It is time to break down those barriers and to say, it's me. You know, I get to move forward. I get to go after what I want. I get to embrace this. And the fool guides us. The fool guides us by saying, it's time to jump. And we can be afraid, terribly afraid of what everybody else thinks of being seen as foolish. And what spirit is saying here is that it does not matter how everybody else defines us. What matters is that we're the heroes of our story. What matters is that we're embracing who we are and where we need to be. Because every single hero, every single entrepreneur, every single person who succeeds outside of the norm is a fool, is first a fool before they are a success. And it moves us to our subconscious emotional self, which is the Hierophant, Taurus energy. And this is going to be a time where we are embracing the power of absolutes. So with the Taurus energy, it represents the Pope. The Hierophant represents the Pope in the in the major arcana and the pope in medieval times was the most powerful person in the world well in the european world and so what we have here is we have the sense of i'm embracing this power and nobody can tell me what to do now it's not making us into a megalomaniac which we have to be aware of but it means that i'm embracing the power of me and nobody gets to connect with me nobody gets to see my traditions my understandings my my power my insight other than myself and as I embrace this power, I embrace who I am, I embrace where I need to go, and I embrace the, the doors that are opening to me because I'm finally connecting with myself in a way that is terrifying, but in a way that is brilliant. And it moves us then to our subconscious emotional self, which is the Knight of Wands. And the Knight of Wands is us in our career. We're taking what we've always defended you know, and now we're saying, I'm this powerhouse. I'm moving forward. I have this horse beneath me. You know, horses are astoundingly powerful, beautiful animals. And then we have the armor on and we're moving forward, going after what we want. We can be a little bit intense during this time. So we have to be mindful about this. But in our careers, we resent stagnation and we need to move. We need to move. We need to be embracing our passion, even if work is just what we do to pay the bills but we have something on the side that is creative and beautiful and you know really helps us move forward really helps us connect that's what we need to do because we need to be warriors and warriors without their heart in it you know that's not that's not what we want to be and so there's a fierceness to us there's a determination to us this is a fantastic time to start looking for if we if we want a job or if we want to start something to start looking for the power within us that really pushes us forward and it brings us then to our subconscious public arena self. And that's the two of pentacles. We need to come into balance. We need to come into balance with what we want, with everything that we are trying to juggle within our lives, but also with ourselves and say, this is where I stand. This is what I stand for. I need to take care of me because if I don't take care of me, the endless prosperity of the eight of, Pent of the two of pentacles, the figure eight that the two of pentacles creates in the Rider Waite Smith deck, as as the pentacles come together and are juggled, and we are, you know, embracing them, we will will not embrace that inter eternity if we do not move forward in stabilizing ourselves and not wearing ourselves thin. All right, and we're going to be highly ambitious, so we have to just be mindful of that ambition, not not overriding our own well-being. All right, Cancer, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the change of this time. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Cancer. <laughs>